Hey everybody, it's Mr. Math Blog, and this lesson is our third lesson. Uh, at the beginning of fifth grade is called property, so we're going to do some properties of addition and multiplication here. So uh, don't forget, all your lessons can be found at www.mrmathblog.com, and then you just go over to your fifth grade link, which is way over on the right. Anyways, uh, there's our common core strand, and our question here is, how can we use properties of operation to solve problems? Okay, so I'm at school, my window's down, you hear some activity in the background there, so... Anyway, so here's some properties of addition. So uh, you're going to see these uh, lots of times, you guys. So here's the commutative property of addition, the associative property of addition, and then uh, the identity property of addition. So there's a blue jay in the background. Can you hear him? <laughs> So the commutative property just says if the order of the add-ins change, the numbers that we add together, those are the add-ins, then the sum stays the same. For example, 5 plus 11 is the same as 11 plus 5. And I've said this in third grade and fourth grade, and I say it in high school also. If I drive to work, I commute to work. So these numbers are commuting around the addition sign. This 5 and 11 move over. They're commuting around, so it's called the commutative property of addition. Okay, the associative property says uh, if the grouping of the add-ins change, then the sum stays the same. So this deals with parentheses, you guys. So instead of adding, if you're adding three numbers together, it doesn't matter if we add, or the, add the 3 plus uh, 14 first, or if we group the 7 and the 3 first and add those first and add them together. Okay, so that's called the associative property. Instead of associating these numbers first, we're going to associate these numbers first. And 7 plus 3 is a nice number because it adds up to 10. 10 plus 14 would be 24. This side's 24 also over here. If we did added these, that's 17 right there, and then 7 plus 17 is 24. But it's a little easier to see it there. The identity property of addition just says um, the sum of any number and 0 is that number. So 16 plus uh, uh, 0 is equal to 16, or you know, 25 plus 0 is equal to 25. So that's the identity property. And and these things are consistent with uh, the multiplication. So properties of multiplication, we have the commutative property, the associative property, and the identity property. The commutative property just says when you multiply, it doesn't matter what the orders are. You can move them around. 5 times 7 is the same as 7 times 5. They're commuting around this multiplication sign. So this is the commutative property of multiplication. Associative just says we're associating different groups. So if the grouping of the factors changes, the product stays the same. Product means multiply. So instead of multiplying 14 or 5 times uh, 8 first, we can multiply the 14 times 5 first and then times 8. You get the same product no matter what. And the identity property of multiplication just says the product of any number and 1 this time is that number. So anything times 1 just equals that number right there. 9 times 1 is equal to 9. All right, so this table shows how many cans uh, each student brought in for a canned food drive. What is the total number of cans brought in from Jan, Nairupa, and Davin? Okay, so we're going to add up these three numbers right here for Jan, Nairupa, and Davin right there. Okay, so to find the sum of the add-ins, we can use mental math, uh, and we can use our commutative and associative properties. So let's go ahead. We're going to use the properties to find 24 plus 28 plus 26. Let me just slide that up there. All right, so 24 plus 28 plus 26. Well, what we're doing here is 28 plus what? What number are we going to put here? What's missing here? Well, it looks like we got the 26 covered over here. This is going to be 24 right there, okay? And do you know what property that is? Look, we just flip-flopped the 28 and the 24. That's their commuted over the addition sign. So this is the commutative property to reorder the add-ins right there. So we use the commutative property. Okay, so now we're going to use uh, the associative property here. So uh, we're going to use the associative property to group uh, the 24 and 26 instead because uh, 24 and 26 add up to a number nicely, you guys. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add, uh, use mental math to add 24 and 26. Well, what's 25 plus 25, you guys? That's 50. Well, since this is one less than 25 and this is one more than 25, then these two guys are going to add up to 50 also right there. Okay, so then 50 plus 28 is 78 right there. Okay. All right, so Jan, Nairupa, and Davin collected 78 cans all together. Okay, so explain why grouping 24 and 26 made the problem easier to solve. Well, 24 is one less than 25, while 26 is one more than 25, so it gives the same answer as adding 25 plus 25, which is, which is 50. Okay, so 
made it nice. All right, so the distributive property says uh, by multiplying a sum, a sum means addition, by a number, it's the same as multiplying each add-in by the number and then adding the products together. So, for example, here is multiplying uh, this sum, the sum 8 plus 9, by this number right here. It's going to be the same as multiplying 5 times 8 and then 5 times 9. So you'll see I'll draw little arrows right there. So and then you add them together. So 5 times 5 times the first number plus 5 times the second number, okay? And it also works for subtraction, you guys. So 3 times the quantity 11 minus 8 is 11 or 3 times 11 minus 3 times 8, okay? So just be careful. If there's a plus, you put a plus. If there's a minus, you put a minus right there, okay? So that's how the distributive property works. So we're going to use the distributive property to find the product. So here's one way we're going to uh, use addition. So 8 plus 59, we're going to change 59 to something plus 50. And so that something plus, I'm sorry, I gave the answer away, something plus 9. Well, what number plus 9 gives us 59? 50. And that's a multiple of 10. And multiples of 10s are nice, easy numbers to multiply with. So now we can use, uh, so there's 59 right there. And now we can use the distributive property, 8 times 50 plus 8 times 9. Okay, and then uh, so we're going to go ahead and put the 8 and the 50 and the 8 and the 9. That's the distributive property right there. All right, and then we'll use some mental math, you guys. And then so 8 times 5 is 40. So 8 times 50 is 400, and 8 times 9 is 72. Then we can just add those two. 400 plus 72 is 7, 472. Okay, we're going to use this same problem right here, 8 times 59, and we're going to use subtraction. Okay, so what number minus 1 equals 59? Well, 60. Okay, so 60 is a, a multiple of 10, so we could have chose 60 and then did 60 minus 1 and then distribute uh, 8 through 8 times 60 and then 8 times 1. Let me slide that up there. Okay, so we're going to do uh, the distributive property here, so it's going to be 8 times 60 minus 8 times 1. Now, 8 times 6 is 48, so 8 times 60 is going to be 480, and then 8 times 1 is 8. Well, 480 minus 8 is 472, which is the same answer that we got when we did uh, 50 plus 9. We got 472. All right, so let's complete the equation and tell which property we used. Okay, so 23 times what equals 23? And then over here, 47 times 15 is the same as 15 times what? Well, this number, think uh, uh, any number times 1 equals itself, so this is going to be 23 times 1. And changing the order does not change the product. So this is going to be uh, 15 times 47 over there, okay? All right, and then let's do the properties here. So this one's the identity property. Do you remember that, the identity property? And then this one's the commutative property. They commuted over that uh, multiplication sign, okay? All right, you guys, I hope that lesson makes sense. Don't forget, all your lessons can be found at Mr. Math Blog. And, and please click like. Thanks a lot.